Hello everyone, it's lovely to virtually meet you. Thank you for tuning into this video. Uh, this is just a quick introduction uh, of myself, the course, and what we'll be looking to have you guys do over the summer as your summer introductory task. Okay, so welcome in. Uh, it's obviously, you are going to be the year of September 2021 through to 2022. Gosh, I can't believe that's come around so quickly. Uh, sadly, due to COVID, we're obviously having to do this little taster session virtually. So um, hopefully this is just as good as being in the classroom. You get to sit in your pyjamas at home and chill out and do this. Um, hopefully, though, we will be back in September, back to normal, whatever that will be, uh, just in time for you guys to be starting your A-level officially and you joining us on campus. Whether you have seen me around the school before or whether you are new to the college completely. Um, I am Miss Sheeran, uh, I'm or Jade, whichever you prefer, uh, and I'll be guiding you through the next two years of your course. So a little bit about me, I have an undergraduate degree, so a bachelor's degree in illustration and photography, and a postgraduate degree, so a master's in art and design interdisciplinary practices. I've also run my own freelance business for a number of years doing illustration and photography for a variety of clients. So lots of experience on not just doing this academically but doing this as a career choice as well so getting started so for the first year some of you may have already seen the taster video that we did uh, for your open day but i just thought i'd refresh your, your minds refresh your memories um, and go through this again because there might be some slight changes so you've got four main skills building modules in your year one um, we've changed this now so that you do all the foundations at the beginning, so your basic skills, your uh, ISOs, apertures and shutter speeds um, in the beginning module, the beginning term, uh, ready to go for the future uh, modules. You then go into a narrative uh, series of projects, so it's six mini projects where you look at how to communicate certain narratives, certain messages within imagery. You look at the context uh, or the importance of context within in imagery and the um the information that you can portray within an image you can lead an audience or not then we look at some things that are a bit more uh, applicable to the workspace or going to university if you want to further this on later on so we look at the commercial photography we look at how uh, you create photographs ready for advertising storyboarding uh, product design all these different things we give you a bit of a taster on that and then we go a bit more into film photography and before you get all excited it's not you know motion picture we're not be, we won't be shooting the next marvel but we will be looking at traditional film methods so 35 mil film developing your own pictures developing your own uh, photographs working at um working with cyanotypes and um photograms and things like that then we begin into the personal investigation which means that you guys get to pick the theme i have selected a list for you guys to pick from just to make your lives a little bit easier but you'll get to pick a theme um and run with it for uh, however many months through into Christmas of the following year. Okay, so that was usually you start that around um, this time next year, and that'll run through Chris to Christmas into your uh, year 13 year. I know that's a long way off, but giving you a little bit of notice. So year two, your self-directed personal investigation. So that's the thing I've just mentioned that you'll be continuing on from uh, your year 12. You'll continue that all the way through to have as much time on it as you possibly can. Um, and that one is worth 60% of your grade. Then we move on to the exam based project or the exam assessment. That's uh, uh, similar to your personal investigation, but it's given to you by the exam board. So you'll have a list of themes from the exam board that you can choose from and you'll run a pro project on that. That one's worth 40% of your grade. Just to help you guys out, I am in the, pro uh, the process of making a photography handbook, which is going to look something a little bit like this. It's going to have all your cheat sheets in. It's going to have all your writing guides, your assessment criteria. It's almost going to be like a textbook just to help you with any uh, need to know information and the key things for being successful on the photography course. It was asked, um, actually uh, asked by my year 
12 students now, the current ones who will be year 13s by the time you join us, um, they actually requested something like this to have everything in the one place so they didn't have multiple sheets all over the place. So fingers crossed that will be ready just in time for September for you. If I can, I'll try and get it out to you earlier so that you guys can have a flick through during the summer. Now, summer project. So as you're looking to join the photography course, it is customary that you have a small project that you are to submit for the first day of the course. OK, so this is um, something that you can do across the summer. It isn't too big, so I wouldn't stress about it, but it does contribute towards your coursework. So the who am I? It's a who am I project. So what I want you to do is look at who you are as a person. OK, so you are going to be creating uh a series of photographs which I've got some examples coming up for you which are my own photographs and I want them to be um, images that sum up who you are now that doesn't mean that you go away and take you know 10 15 selfies with Instagram filters it means that you go away and you think carefully about what makes you you what elements make you who you are so there are a number of rules that I've set to this um, so I'll go through them very quickly. You can see them here. As I previously mentioned, I don't want any Snapchat or Instagram filters or TikTok filters or anything like that. I want these photographs to be as they are. Take the photo. Think carefully about the composition. Think carefully about the lighting. And just as they are, no real editing. I don't mind a little bit of editing, but if it looks overly edited, I will know. Trust me. Uh, rule number two, it must include one portrait image, so one image of a person, okay? This could be you, it could be uh, a family member, it could be a friend, I don't mind, uh, but it has to include at least one photograph of a person. Uh, it must include one landscape image, so one image of a location, a place, not a rotor, you know, not that the picture is laid out as landscape. Um, which I would hope it would be if you are taking pictures of a landscape. But, you know, I don't want people, portraits of people lay down. Uh, that's not what I mean. It's not about the photographs orientation. It's about what's the content. Uh, number four, you must have a minimum of six images, but no more than 10, because I want you to think carefully about the images that you are selecting. OK, I want you to think carefully about what you're including, what are the best photographs, even if some come out a bit wrong, you know, you could include them if it's not quite perfect and you can explain why. Um, rule number five, work must be placed onto your Google slide presentation in your folder. Now, I know you're going, Jade, I haven't even got a Google slide. You know, I haven't even got a folder yet. Please bear with it will be coming to you if you just keep them to one side on a, a separate Google slides document. For now, you can always transfer them over. But this will have to be on my Google slide template that I share with you at the end of this year. Uh, well, academic year ready for September, because that's what I mark and that's what I have access to. It's also a test to see whether you can actually access it or not. OK. And finally, rule number six, you must have taken all of the photographs you submit. They must be your photographs, not one a friend has taken, you know, not one that is uh, been shared on someone else's Instagram. Like I said, this goes towards your coursework. If this is something that you have gotten off of somewhere else, you've gotten it off of a friend's Instagram, Facebook, anything like that, it will be checked for plagiarism and it will light up like a Christmas tree if it's not yours. Even if you think you can get away with it, the system online will know if it's been shown somewhere else. So please, please, please bear that in mind. These are not going to be detrimental, you know, what your grade is going to be based on, but it does give me an, a rough idea of the skills, what you look for in photographs, the eye that you have when composing your photographs. So please just do your best to make sure that they are your photographs. So, you should include six images as a, a minimum. So you can lay it out on the page however you want. Please make sure that they're the best quality you can find um, or, or save of your photographs. Please include, if you want to give it a title, I've obviously just called mine image one, two, three, four, five, and six. But I would like you to give a brief description. It doesn't have to be massively long. Just, you know, 
why did you take it? Why does this sum you up? What were you looking for uh, when taking the image? Why is it special to you? You know, where is it taken? Did you have to move? Did you have to, you know, look at for the composition? Did you have to rearrange things? Those sorts of questions. It doesn't have to be massively long. So if we, that's my image number one. So we do the same again for image number two. I've included a picture of me and my dad because me and my dad are pretty much best friends. We go to a lot of rugby games together. So that's something that I would say makes me who I am. Um, live music, you know, I've included a photograph because I go out and take photographs at a lot of festivals uh, and a lot of uh, gigs. So I'm usually at a, a venue of some sorts um, taking pictures. So I think that pretty much sums me up. Um, I love going to galleries and I like people watching. So this was a nice uh, combination of the two. Uh, this one uh, is a picture from Torquay, uh, where my family are from. We tend to go and visit my grandmother all the time when we, you know, when we get a chance when COVID isn't about. And I just thought it was a nice composition for the sun setting over the, uh, the summer when we were last allowed out. And finally, I have a bit of a sweet tooth, <laughs> so I'm easily swayed with a. a, a cupcake or um a victoria sponge or something like that but i do like to bake so i've thought carefully about how to compose this picture with the cake and the mixer together yeah so i've thought a little bit carefully rather than just taking pictures of food i've thought about how i can get those bits in together to say you know i, I make the cakes as well so please think carefully when you are making or creating your photographs think carefully about what message you want to try and say through those images so I know I'm going through this very quickly, but hopefully I just don't want to keep you too long. I want to just get to the point with it and, and go from there. So things to consider, colours, are you going to use full colour? Are you going to use black and white? Are you going to use um, muted tones? You're going to edit it slightly so they're not quite as uh, saturated in colour. You're going to mute the tones out or are you going to transfer it into black and white? Does the message change if you change the colours? Uh, focus. So it's not just about whether your image is in focus or if it's a bit fuzzy, but it's about what you choose to focus on. Do you choose to focus on something that's in front of you or do you choose to focus on something that is, you know, beyond what's immediately in front of you? Uh, lighting. Again, are you going to do it in daylight? Are you going to do it with a torch? Are you going to do it with a camera flash? Think about your use of light and shadows within your images, because that, again, could affect your uh, message within your photograph. And I know I've mentioned it before, crop and composition. How are you going to compose these photographs? Are you going to have all your mates crowded in together? Obviously, COVID apl uh, applicable. Be careful. Are you going to have you know, one friend on their own? Is one friend more important than, than another? Would you have them sat in a specific way um, to get your message across? These are the things that you need to be thinking of, okay? Even to which you crop your image down if you want to make uh, it a little bit smaller. Are you going to zoom in on someone's face and crop it all the way down so we just can see their head and shoulders? Or are you going to have them head to toe? These are the things you need to consider when taking your photographs. OK, so things like rule of thirds, you've got. Um, so this is the rule of thirds. Again, it's a compositional element. If you're interested, you can Google it. But it's just the way that the uh, photograph is laid out, that we've got one, two, three. OK, we've got a little bit of light here, which would draw our eye towards the main feature, which would be this little toadstool. So these are things that could you know, change or affect your image, as we've just said. We look at the colour. So it's not it's overly muted around the outside, but you've got some gorgeous warm tones in the center. We go back again. Your focus, the focus is the mushroom in the foreground compared to, you know, the backgrounds. Uh, that's your depth of field and it's all blurred out. You look at the light. So the light is coming from underneath the toadstool to give it more uh, depth and shape and dimension within this um photographs so although it's a 2d photograph you still get the idea of it uh, of space and uh shape and form within that photograph and finally you know your crop and composition like i said rule of thirds they've not cropped all the way in they've given you space to go across to show 
the sheer expanse of space round that teeny tiny little mushroom. OK, so these are things, you know, could change your image depending on the way you look at things. Now, technology wise, I know not all of you have DSLRs at home, so I am happy for you to use phones, iPads, DSLRs if you've got them. You can even use uh, the old school disposable cameras that you have to hand into Asda and get developed. I really don't mind. If you've got Polaroids, you know, you've got a little Instax Polaroid camera, you can use that. So long as you give me between six and ten photographs, I am a happy bunny. OK, if you've got questions or if you need support at any point, you need to drop me an email down to um, the email address that's just there, jsheeran at brookvalegroupie.com. Uh, even if you've got questions about the course, I will be available uh, and check in my emails throughout the summer break in case there's anything that you need. Uh, on the next few slides are some books that you may uh, be interested in if there's some you want to get a head start and do some reading over the summer. Um, it's not mandatory. It's just in case you have a little bit of spare time. You know, you've got a birthday or a little bit of pocket money. You've done some work over the summer and you want to buy yourself a photography book to help you with the course. Uh, there's all these different books. So depending on what your focus is are going to be on, these will all help you towards the course. OK, so you've got things like the photographer's eye uh, that's in multiple editions. Uh, Studio Anywhere is all about how to set up studios uh, wherever you go and how to pose models. Dramatic portraits, if you're looking at really strong narratives. Understanding a photograph, that's a really useful one for when we get into doing image analysis later on. OK, and further on, there's some more examples on here. The photography ideas book, I've got that in my classroom at the moment. And that's actually a really nice one. I think it's only about four or five pound on uh, Amazon at the moment. Um, it's a really good one because it's just got loads of different ideas, especially for when you're coming up to your uh, personal investigation. It will give you loads of ideas and to inspire you about how you can take different photographs doing a whole heap of mediums through mixed media, traditional and digital. OK, so hopefully that's answered some of your questions. Uh, I will be posting the task for the summer uh, task of the Who Am I project onto the Google Classroom as a um, set piece of work as well. So if you have any issues or you're not quite sure, That'll have the deadline on it. See there. If you're still a bit unsure, please, 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 please email me. I am happy to help. OK, well, it was lovely to virtually meet you. Um, well, yeah, as much as I can meet you um, again, please get in touch. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer any. OK, have a lovely summer and I look forward to seeing you in September. OK, bye.